I want people to understand that I'm not saying that teachers and administrators and others are evil. I'm not even saying that they even know what the system was designed to do. However, they are involved in a system that was designed to communicate a religious reality of godlessness. Sir Isaac Newton, most of us know him as, you know, the mathematician, the, the scientists, but the facts are he could rightly be described as a theologian who did science as a hobby. Mm. Newton wrote more on theology and really providing commentary on scripture than he ever wrote about science. But why don't we know that? Why don't most of us know that? Which brings me to your immediate question. The reason why we don't know that is because the educational system in America has been intentionally invaded, co-opted, and taken over by people who had the objectives to use education as a means to stop me if you heard this before, fundamentally transform the United States of America Amen. into a society who has moved away from God. And what I'm talking about are people in the late 1700s, in the 1800s, and in the 1900s who intentionally infiltrated our system of instruction that we call education. And, and I really can't call it education because education is the acquisition of knowledge. The Bible tells us the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Right. But fools despise wisdom in knowledge. And so can we truly have a system of the acquisition of knowledge if we fundamentally deny the knowledge of God? I would simply say no. And so when we see the educational system and many people say our educational system of public education in America has failed, I often res respond, can you truly say whether or not it's failed or succeeded without having any knowledge whatsoever of its intention? Right. The only way you can access whether anything has failed is whether or not you know the intended purpose. I have said that the system of education in America, the system that we call education in America, uh, has functioned as it has been designed to function. Amen. It has not failed. It has been a robust success. The unspoken truth, however, is that the objectives of the system of instruction are not what most people think that they were from the onset. So what you're telling me is the schools understand that education is discipleship and further the schools understand that education is ultimately religious in nature and and i'm with you the the education system hasn't failed at all it's maybe the most successful evangelistic religious organization in the world and so i i have to ask then um you know, I'm sure we've got listeners here whose kids are still in those schools. What should they be thinking if they understand the purpose of those schools is to indoctrinate, to disciple their children in a religious worldview? First yeah. of all, what should they be thinking? And then we have to get into, well, can they be fixed? Can they be, you know, yeah. can they be reformed? Yeah, I think along these lines, one of the one of the things one of the things that has to happen, and I want people to understand, I'm not saying that teachers and administrators and others are evil. I'm not even saying that they even know what the system was designed to do. However, they are involved in a system that was designed to communicate a religious reality of godlessness that was designed to strip from children in particular any fidelity. Uh, to their parents, one, but but more importantly, to God. You know, I, I, immediately what comes to mind is Charles Francis Potter, you know, signer of the Humanist Manifesto. In, in 1930, he wrote a book called Humanism, A New Religion, to where he literally says, what can theistic Sunday schools do teaching only a fraction of a children, of the children for only a fraction of, a t of the time in comparison to the full-on five-day-a-week course in secular humanism? Mm -hmm. They understood in the 1800s, in the 1900s, that by having a system of instruction that denies the knowledge of God, but it's offered with repetition and then made mandatory for you to participate in, right. that they knew what their objectives were. And so they they rightly concluded that the, the Sunday schools and the churches will lose, so to speak, if we get all of the children, or at least the majority of the children, and have them for the majority of the time, and we, we teach this, what they call then, secular humanistic worldview. And so that was their objectives. And so to see 
that, you know, prayer is outlawed in schools. You cannot teach from the Bible. You cannot teach, you know, biblical orthodoxy in, in, in the schools. But you can teach atheism and you can teach LGBTQ and, and you can teach DEI. You can teach Black Lives Matter. You can teach all these other kinds of things. But you cannot teach what the Bible says. That is a part of the original intention for those who co-opted well, the modern public education system, John Dewey, you know, a horse man and others, that's what they sought to accomplish. So what I believe parents need to be thinking is, wait a minute, if I'm a Christian, should I continue to subject my, my child to, to this understanding? And when you see the contrast what is required to make a disciple? You know, the Bible tells us faith comes by hearing. The Greek text doesn't just mean audible reception, but it means audible reception as the product of presentation with repetition over time. So they understand that in the world system that audible reception by presentation with repetition over time, it is a primary means of making a disciple. They understand that, which is why our country looks the way it looks because we are looking at the product of multiple generations of effective, godless discipleship. You know, it, when we started this show, it was not my intent to have another homeschooling show. <laughs> we, we produced the Schoolhouse Rock podcast. Uh, my wife and I and my family produced a full feature length documentary on homeschooling. And our family has spent seven years deeply ingrained in homeschooling ministry. So we launched the Thinking Dad podcast, and my idea is I want to build men up to um understand what it looks like to be a man with a biblical worldview who mm. thinks biblically about life and culture and the church and work and family and discipleship. And yet, uh, Abe, I think you're like the 10th interview I've, I've recorded so far for this show, yeah. and it seems like everyone comes back to this fundamental of education because it's impossible to separate education discipleship from a holistic worldview. Yeah. And so as, as parents, I think it's impossible to ignore the call that you should be looking very, very carefully at how your kids are being educated if you want to transmit your values to them. This episode of Rapid Response was brought to you by CTC Math. Visit them at ctcmath.com today.